Dr. Nisha Aurora, Director of the Comprehensive Center for Sleep Medicine at Mount Sinai School of Medicine. Thanks to both of you so much for being here. Becky, I'm going to start with you because sleep apnea is something that you've seen in your family. It's really, we could be a case study. My mom is one of eight, and seven of the eight have had sleep apnea diagnoses. And we're pretty sure the eighth has it, um, but he just doesn't want to wear the mask. <laughs> So when we have family reunions, everyone shows up with their CPAP machines, and when we all sleep in the same house, it sounds like there's a jet landing because <laughs> there's CPAP machines everywhere. Wow. Um, we're pretty sure that my, my grandfather passed away as a result of sleep apnea. We didn't know it at the time, but he fell asleep during the day. He fell asleep at the wheel, and he had the classic snoring with the <laughs> stopping. Yeah the stopping of the breathing, and he died in his sleep. So it's clearly a very serious condition. And Dr. Aurora, I'm wondering, looking at Becky's family, does this demonstrate that there's definitely a genetic component? There appears to be a genetic component. There are actually multiple issues that can lead to sleep apnea. Body habitus, male gender, uh, middle age. But there is a genetic component that is underlying also. Who is most at risk? Middle-aged men mm -hmm. who are overweight or obese. Really? Women start to approach uh, the the prevalence once they hit menopause. And what are the problems? I mean, what can it, what, where can it lead, sleep apnea? So there's been a lot of uh, investigative research done that shows that sleep apnea untreated is associated with hypertension, cardiovascular morbidity, insulin resistance, strokes, and of course, neurocognitive dysfunction. Then your oxygen level is falling during the night. You're having these repetitive awakenings, so by the morning, you feel terrible. And do some people who suffer from it then fall asleep during the day? Absolutely. You're, if you haven't had a good night's sleep, you're going to feel sleepy and tired during the day. Very scary. I knew someone who suffered from it who would fall asleep at the wheel, which is incredibly scary, obviously. Right. So you have some fantastic products. Becky, you brought these. Let's go through them and talk about what they do and you know, what sort of cures are out there for people. Let's right. go with the CPAC. Stuff. Well, I think a really important thing, and you know, Dr. Aurora will have lots of thoughts on these things too, but what I know about people and CPAP machines is they hate wearing them. And so a lot of people who've been diagnosed, they don't want to wear this, this exactly. gear. So a huge part of the gear element is getting devices that make wearing the CPAP mask more comfortable. So mm -hmm. what we're talking about is at night, people with apnea sleep with this mask. And it pushes air, right? Yes. And, and that's a continuous, I mean, I just know it as it feels like a, a jet it's engine. It's a column of air that keeps the upper airway, so nose, mouth, starting at the nose, mouth, mm -hmm. down to the vocal cords, keeps it open or patent during the night. So right. that doesn't close. Because the lack of that air is what wakes you up. Right, and exactly. Then it out. Okay. Gotcha. So um, one of the problems with wearing this mask is if you're a side sleeper, it can push against your face. So this is from Contour. This is their CPAP pillow. And what it has is a, a space here. So that let's say you're sleeping here. Here's your head. And as you sleep, there's a, a, a concave space for the CPAP machine to fit into so that it doesn't put as much pressure on your face while you're sleeping. This is, you know, that kind of contour right. foam here. So it's and meant to be used with that, you, not alone. This okay. is an accessory mm -hmm. that hopefully for side sleepers makes it more comfortable for them to be able to wear the CPAP machine. I know there are members of my family who in their sleep rip the mask off. Exactly. Huge problem. Yes. And Dr. Aurora was telling me before the segment that there's been a lot of changes in the machines themselves. A lot themselves. of changes in the machines. Uh, the machines have gotten smarter. Uh, in the sense that they can automatically adjust the pressure after sensing how much your airway is collapsing and give that exact amount of pressure, which is nice. So if you sleep on your back and you need more pressure on your back, but less on your side, the machine senses that and it gives it accordingly. Uh, makes doctor, it more does it go without saying that before anyone try any of these products, they should go to a doctor Absolutely. and have a sleep analysis done to yep. figure out what's going on? Absolutely, because it's, you cannot diagnose sleep apnea just by symptomatology alone. Right. We have to see the events. You need to be observed overnight. Exactly. All right. Okay, great. Now let's talk about these masks. These have been around for a while, right? They have. And one of the big complaints is that the straps can affect, they, they kind of dig in a little bit or they just don't feel good. So this is Patacheek is the name of the company and they have these really soft, snuggly fleece covers for all the straps. They come in all the different mm -hmm. varietals because some of these masks have multiple straps at, at mouth and at head points depending on the severity mm -hmm. of your apnea. Um, I just wanted to bring out a couple of the masks that are new, the, the actual mask technology themselves. And this one really points to a trend that I hope we see, and I know my mom will corroborate this, because one of her complaints about her sleep apnea machine is how loud it is. 
And it's really hard for the spouses, too, because they have to listen to this continuous yep. worrying. Now, this is from a company called Weinman. It's a German company. It's not FDA approved yet. But this has reduced the decibel level of the CPAP machines by half. Oh, that's great. So much, much, much quieter. That's great. Hopefully, this is a trend we'll see in the machines that are coming to the U.S. And then this is from Philips Respironics. Um, this, what's neat about this mask is it has individual moving parts. So instead of being one hunk of plastic that sits on top of your face, all of these pieces move independently ah. and they are soft, soft silicone. So you can see that that kind of customization Very and individual movement would hopefully make it more comfortable yeah. and allow people who have Absolutely. been diagnosed with this to be consistent in their mask wearing. Now, how much of sleep apnea is simply a problem of the position you're sleeping in? It it can be positional only mm -hmm. in some people. It can start off as just being positional, i.e. on your back, and then becoming progressively worse to all positions. Um, and some people can be more severe in one position than the other position. So we do always test for people on their back, on their side. So is that what this helps with, positional apnea? Yes. Okay. This, this is, is the Zoma mm -hmm. uh, sleep positioning device. And so the way this works, it's intended to keep you on your side and off of your back. Okay. You know the nudge that the spouse always has to yeah, give? Yeah, yeah. Get off your back. Well, instead, what the, the person who's got a snoring problem, they sleep with this thing on their back. So when they're on their side, no problem. But as soon as they flip, try to flip onto their back, Can't do this it. pushing into the back of the bed, can't do it. Mm -mm. All right. Look mm -mm. at all of these great products. Wow, fantastic. Thank you so much, Becky and Dr. Aurora, for all this great information. For more health and wellness news, be sure to visit the health page at abcnews.com.